Thank you very much for your invitation to this nice conference. Uh, the subject of my talk today is the relation between n equals to queer uh, gauge theories, that's four dimensional theories with uh, supercharges and uh, quantum groups. This work is based uh, on a paper with uh, Nikita Nikrasov, which appeared last fall, and work in progress with uh, Nikrasov and Samson Shadashvili, which uh, should appear very soon. Uh, so, the general uh, content of uh, this work is um, the zyber theory. We start from Lagrangian description of n equals to uh, gauge theory in four dimensions. So that in the UV, we have gauge multiplet and matter multiplet, which are described by saying what the gauge group is and what representation for the matter multiplet is. And in the infrared, we are interested about the low energy physics in the infrared. And uh, this infrared physics is described uh, by a billion nonlinear sigma model for the space of uh, maps from the space time R31 to the special curl manifold, uh, curly M, uh, that's generally known as a Coulomb branch. Well, in this talk, you will consider a uh, Coulomb branch only. So the geometry of that special color manifold is locally described by a prepotential function, F, if it's a holomorphic function, and its a second derivative determines the metric on that modular space. So there are different approaches to finding out that uh, cyber uh, geometry, and the one we'll uh, use today in this talk is based on direct uh, integration in the, for the path integral in the UV on the gauge theory, so that's explicit summation over all instanton contributions and integration over the modular space of instantons. Uh, again, on a general uh, re grounds, uh, you can reason that the low energy physics of uh, n equals two theories uh, is associated with integrable systems. Namely, you do that by considering n equals two theory, I mean the theory with uh, eight supercharges, on a space time of geometry R3 times S1. And then you see that uh, the vacuum space of the three dimensional theory is hypercolor space and has twice dimension of the vacuum space of the four dimensional theory. And moreover, if you send the size of the circle S1 to infinity, you will see that naturally that hypercolor space, which is uh, fibered over this base, is constructed to the base. The fibers are special, uh, th sorry, the fibers are Lagrangian uh, tori of uh, dimension 2R. And uh, this uh, total structure uh, is, uh, th th they're Lagrangian in uh, one of the possible symplectic structures that you can choose in that hyper uh, space, the one which naturally uh, comes uh, from the uh, holomorphicity of the special geometry of M. So this is a holomorphic or algebraic or analytic version of the usual uh, classical integrable system familiar from textbooks on uh, quantum mechanics, um, except that everything is doubled a little bit. So that, uh, you see, if, uh, if you say that the complex uh, uh, dimension of the base is R, and the complex dimension of the total phase space is 2R, then uh, we see that the fibers, those tori, they are real 2R dimensional tori, so we have uh, twice many uh, uh, angle variables and twice many action variables. The action variables are related to each other by that holomorphic uh, function prepotential, and uh, they come as, as integrals of PDQ, or D minus one of omega of the holomorphic symplectic form over the dual cycles on the tori. Now, integrable systems for all uh, ADE quiver gauge theories, I will review in a few slides briefly what it is, uh, are derived in uh, this paper with Nikita from the explicit instanton partition function and omega background on R4 with two parameters epsilon one, epsilon two, in the limit when epsilons are sent to zero and the theory becomes the usual n equals two theory in four dimensions. Uh, those epsilon parameters, they effectively uh, deform the theory and make it uh, effectively like in, in, in the infrared box uh, by rotating the two planes on which uh, R4 split 
and epsilon one is angular velocity of one plane, and epsilon two is uh, angular velocity of the another plane. So the quiver gauge theory is the class that we consider is the following uh, of the following type. The gauge group is a product of unitary gauge groups, and the matter is taken a fundamental, anti-fundamental, or bifundamental or joint representations, and the theory is assumed to be asymptotically free or conformal in the UV, so that the UV beta function is negative or zero. Uh, there is a topological string approach uh, to the theories by geometric engineering, by Katz uh, Meyer-Waffer, which uses a mirror symmetry uh, applied to the A-model construction of such theories and uh, gives the answer, gives the solution in terms of the Calabi-Yau threefolds. The way uh, we get uh, the results are different and we get the zyber quiton curve uh, immediately or spectral curve algebraic system instead of uh, Calabi Yau threefold uh, geometry. That's uh, a difference. So the pictures for the quiver graphs we are using there are what's so called n equals two notations, one, one uh, hypermultiplet and by fundamental representation, n equals two hypermultiplet is represented by just one line between the two nodes, and each node represents a simple factor in the gauge group. So this is an example of a particular quiver that you might draw. Uh, so there are a few gauge group factors and by fundamental matter connecting different gauge group factors. And then in addition to each node, you may attach uh, several flavors of uh, matter and fundamental representation for that node uh, that's not denoted picturally here, but you'll just remember that to each node there is associated the number of flavors for the fundamental representation of this node and the number of colors that's uh, for the simple gauge group factor in that node. Now, the good theory in UV has non-positive beta function, and that implies this simple linear inequality on the ranks of the gauge groups and the number of uh, flavors in, e in each gauge group node of this type. And one can notice that this is exactly uh, the same type of uh, inequalities that appear in the classification of generalized uh, uh, Cartan matrices. So in fact, uh, a simple mathematical theorem of which follows from these assumptions and from these inequalities on beta functions is that the QR graph uh, has to be ADE or affine ADE Dinkin graph. This is a well-known statement. So then we have quite listable and, fi uh, and fi finite list of theories that we are need to do uh, with very explicitly. Uh, in, in particular, in this classification, one finds that when the QR graph is of the affine type, then it's not possible to stick in any fundamental matter and the possible distribution of the gauge group ranks and I, the number of colors, is given just by the Dinkin labels on the nodes proportional to one common factor N. So that's uh, the famous picture for AD type of diagrams and they're associated uh, by McKay correspondence uh, polyhedra in the three-dimensional space. There is A-type, there is D-type, there is E-type. And uh, by the red circle, I denote here the so-called zero node, which you remove from the affine graph to get a finite graph. So this is the queer series that we are dealing with. Now, uh, let me introduce notation, ball G, uh, will be equal to the quiver group associated to the Dinkin graph of the quiver diagram for the case when the graph is of finite type. And when the quiver graph of the affine type, GQ is G hat, that's a affine Cosmo delay algebra associated to the finite dimensional simple group G. So for the rest of the talk, G group will be the most important. And you uh, shall remember that G is the quiver AD group. It's not the gauge group and the solution that we will get in the end, it will be formulated in terms of, the, of this group G. So uh, to announce the result, the integrable system, which is associated to the four-dimensional theory, is the following. The phase space, that the hypercolor uh, space, the total phase space of the system, is given by the modular space, well, let me describe the two classes. 
for the fin class theories, for the finite class theories, when the queer group G is finite dimensional, this uh, phase space is the modal space of G monopoles on three dimensional space R2 crosses one. And this space, those monopoles, they have uh, singularities uh, inserted in R2 uh, of the drug type and the type the precise data in those singularities is described by the fundamental uh, masses of the fundamental matter attached to the squares. For the affine class that lifted, uh, the solution is lifted by one more circle. And then the phase space is the modal space of G instant ones on R2 times T2. In this model space of G instantons, you fix uh, the number, the C2, the charge of instantons, to be equal to N, where N is the uh, overall constant in the ranks of the gauge groups. And also you fix the zero and first order behavior of the bundle at the infinity of R2. And the zero order behavior of that bundle is fixed by the gauge coupling constants. The first order behavior of the bundle is fixed by the masses of the bifundamental uh, matter. So for the 5D, uh, one can uh, consider a similar uh, procedure by taking the index for the 5D theory on R4 times S1, where R4 is also subject to omega background, and then send parameters of omega background to zero and uh, uh, solve for this so-called 5D version of the Zeibert-Witten theory or 5D version of uh, the integrable systems. Uh, in that case, everything is replaced by the trigonometric counterpart of that. So the R2 plane that we had in this discussion, this one, is replaced by R times S1. And that this one is the dual of the size of the circle on which you compactify the theory, the 5D theory. So again, in the uh, final class, uh, the, mod the phase space is the modular space of G monopoles on R times S1 times S1. And in the affine class, that would be G instantons on R times S1 times T2. And the charge of those G instantons is proportional to N. And the uh, charge which is screened by the fundamental uh, masses of the monopoles on the space is again proportional to n. So that was uh, the description of the phase space. Now, what is the base space? What is the base of this algebraic integrable system? So let me uh, introduce the notation C sub x, which for the 4D theories would be that uh, R2 plane with uh, some chosen complex structure on that C. And for the 5D theories, it would be a cylinder. R times S1, or we will view the cylinder as multiplicative complex plane, uh, C times. So the base space M happens to be the space of holomorphic maps from this uh, complex uh, plane or multiplicative complex plane to the space of conjugacy classes in GQ, in that uh, queer group, which might be finite dimensional group or a cosmody, affine cosmody group associated to the queer. And the degree of map is proportional to the gauge group rank n. So explicitly, their parameterization uh, proceeds uh, in terms of the following function. So let me uh, introduce the function yix, where i runs over the nodes of the quiver of the simple gauge group factors as exponential of trace of expectation value of trace of log x minus phi i. So this is a generation function for the expectation values of the uh, carrier varying operators, trace of, of phi i to the k, where phi i are complex scalars of n equals two vector multiplet. So just by expanding the function y i of x in uh, power series in x, you can recover the traces of phi i to all powers. And uh, this, um, the, their correlation functions are parameterized by the Coulomb parameters. Uh, 
with the Coulomb parameters hidden in the function y. So, so these functions yi, they encode the answer to the problem, and they are combined to present the solution in a readable form in terms of the following uh, object. It's a group element. It's a group valued gq group valued element, uh, which is a product of the functions yi of x to the power core root, the product over Dinkin uh, nodes, and it's divided by the product over fundamental matter polynomials, pi, to raised to the power of the co-weights. So the fundamental matter polynomials, pi, here, they are associated again to the each node of the quiver. And they have the degree equal to the number of flavors of the fundamental matter inserted in that node. And their roots are given by the masses of the fundamental matter. And the overall coefficient of those uh, fundamental matter polynomials uh, that's how we call them, uh, pi. The overall coefficient, qi, is exponentiated gauge coupling constant. So that the qi is exponent of 2 pi square root of minus 1 tau i, where tau i It's 4 pi i over g squared Young Mills plus c over 2 pi. So you view the roots and the co weights as multiplicative homomorphisms from the multiplicative uh, group of complex numbers to the maximal torus of g. And then this uh, formal produces for you a torus valued element which is a function of x. So, so this map is parameterized by the uh, Coulomb moduli. And as we want to give the map to the uh, space, uh, to, the con to the space of conjugacy classes in x, uh, in fact, we would need to take um, invariance, and that's the characters. So the zyberg witten curve would be described by the system of following equations. You uh, evaluate the characters of the ADE group G on that group element G of X that I described on the previous slide and equate the characters to the polynomials TI of X. So the polynomials, they have the degree an I where an I is the number of colors in the given gauge group node. And the coefficients of those polynomials are parameterized, the, the coefficients, they parameterize the Coulomb module space. So there is a technical factor in front of uh, those uh, characters uh, used to remove uh, uh, certain square root uh, cuts so that the character is defined in such a way that its expansion, starting from the highest weight, uh, goes as the function yi and doesn't contain any factors of the polynomials pi. So that the first term is yi, and then when you apply one uh, reflection by, uh, by simple uh, while root, you get the next term, which is pi over y times the product of the functions uh, yi in the adjoint uh, nodes to the queer, and so on. Uh, so, so this uh, so this presentation of the uh, zyberg witten curve it uh, gives it for arbitrary g for all cases uh, a, d, and e, and uh, in some cases, it's possible to simplify it uh, by considering the, the spectral curve. Namely, instead of uh, taking the characters of the group and equating it to the polynomials, one can uh, uh, pick a representation of the G, consider determinant in that representation, and uh, re-express the external powers of uh, fundamental, re-express external powers of this representation in terms of the uh, fundamental representations associated to the gauge group, and then uh, get the spectral curve associated to that representation. So the spectral curve of uh, the theory will be a cover uh, of the order equal to the dimension of the representation, while this curve, which we call a uh, chimeral curve, is a cover which has the order of the dimension of wild group. This, uh, that's much bigger normally, like for uh, SLN, you would get that this curve uh, has the 
is, is, is a cover of order and factorial, while the spectral curve associated with the simplest fundamental representation is a cover of the order n. Well, anyways, this uh, representation, it doesn't, uh, sorry, this presentation of the curve, it doesn't depend on a choice of any representation of G, and uh, we take it as the basic one. Are there questions at this point about uh, the solution? Good. So let me give you just a one example that the uh, formula that uh, G of X is a product is a product of the nodes of the quiver YI to the core roots divided by pi to the core weights for in one case just reduces to this matrix to this diagonal matrix which on diagonals has y divided by square root of p and square root of p divided by y and then when you take the trace and the fundamental representation is that square root factor of the polynomials p that we introduced to remove square root uh, branch cuts gets equal just to the function y of x plus p over x and the solution that we have found is that this character should be equal to the polynomial of degree n. So the zeiberg quiven curve in the case of A1 theory, I mean A1 quiver, but with arbitrary number of colors and arbitrary number of fundamental matters, is described by y plus p over y equals t. So that formula must be probably familiar to uh, many people in the audience, and uh, that's it. This is just the uh, expansion of it, uh, namely P of X is the fundamental uh, polynomial, which is uh, the gauge uh, group coupling Q times the product over fundamental masses of X minus uh, fundamental masses. Uh, and the gauge polynomial T of X, which appears in the right-hand side of this equation, has the degree N and the highest uh, coefficient in it is uh, uh, fixed uh, by the solution in terms of the gauge uh, coupling constant, namely, if the theory is of the conformal type, then it's just one plus Q, so that uh, the asymptotics of uh, are the left-hand side and the right-hand side is equal as X goes to infinity, you would have uh, one plus Q on both uh, sides. If uh, the number of uh, flavors is less than two N, then when X goes to infinity, you can neglect uh, this term, and then uh, the coefficient, the highest coefficient in T of X is just one. Now, so let me say again what is an integrable system uh, for the affine class of uh, theories. In that case, as I mentioned, the phase space P would be this, the model space of G instantons on the multiplicative or additive uh, plane of complex numbers, Cx, depending on whether you consider the 4D or 5D version of the theory, times the torus, which I denote here as the elliptic curve, with the uh, elliptic modules Q, and you take those instantons to have charge N. The elliptic, uh, the modulus of that elliptic uh, curve Q is given by the product over all nodes in the affine quiver diagram of the individual exponentiated gauge coupling constants raised to the powers equal to the Dinkin labels of, uh, of the theory. Uh, and the gauge uh, group ranks, uh, SU and I, those and I are proportional to the Dinkin labels as well, times some fixed number N. So this N appears as the charge of those G instantons. And you see, uh, it, in, instead of having some kind of uh, SLN or CN symmetry that we had for in the original theory, it's lost uh, here in this description. The symmetry is in terms of the G group uh, rather than M. Now, the base of uh, the space, well, that's the space of, the, of those polynomials Ti of x that appears on the right-hand side of this equation. And you can interpret it as the maps from the x-plane, from the complex uh, x-plane, additive or multiplicative, to the weighted projective space. The weighted projective space uh, is this, the model space of G bundles on the elliptic curve and you take those maps to have degree n, and that's, uh, after normalization, that's precisely the description by the 
uh, polynomials ti of x that uh, uh, we have in this slide. So you can count, you can compute dimension of uh, the total space and the base and uh, check that uh, one is uh, twice uh, of the other. And you can also, uh, you can also see uh, geometrically the construction of this projection. You just restrict the G bundle on CX times EQ on a particular fiber uh, of the elliptic curve and then you get the G bundle on that elliptic curve and so uh, you have the projection from the module space of G uh, instantons to the module space of maps from the X plane to the module space of G bundles on a Q. And also you, you can verify that uh, uh, this is a Lagrangian vibration so that the fibers, they are Lagrangian tori with respect to the natural uh, holomorphic two common zero uh, symplectic form on uh, the total space. Now, for G, if, if G is SLR plus one, then there is a non-dual description for the modular space of those G instantons on R2 times T2 of charge R. Namely, the dual description is uh, the SLN Hitchin system on the dual torus is R plus one puncture. And this is the Goyota type description for the construction of the n equals two theories by taking uh, two comma zero six dimensional theory and reducing it on a, on a Riemann surface. So uh, by doing that uh, Goyota type uh, procedure, you would naturally uh, find the integrable system of this uh, type which is described at the bottom uh, rather than the one we get here. And Explicit correspondence between uh, such two descriptions is uh, well known in the case when the quiver is of A type, when it's just a linear chain or uh, a circle. So in this case, we do have uh, an options from and uh, we can uh, map it to the Hitchin uh, system description, but in the general case, for, for a general G, that uh, num transform is not available. If it were, we would know how to describe uh, E-type uh, instantons. Uh, we, would, uh, we would know uh, something like a DHM construction for that, but it's uh, still an open question. So since we do not have such uh, num description, num transformation for a general G, we prefer to study those integrable systems in this uh, description where the symmetry is of G type rather than in the dual uh, picture where the symmetry is SLN associated to the uh, ranks of the cage group. Now, that was uh, the classical part and now we will consider the quantization of uh, those integrable systems. Are there questions about classical part? Okay, so then this is the summary. So that vibration P to M of the hypercolor space to P, the total phase space or the vacuum of the three dimensional theory to the modular space of the four dimensional theory is the classical integrable system associated with the non-trivial 4D and equals to quantum theory with non perturbative effects. Uh, the summation over all instantons was taken into account. And this classical integrable system is built using G of Q, that queer symmetry. And the explicit description was given in terms of the GQ characters. So now we want to study the quantum version of, those, of that integrable system to quantize it. And uh, mathematically, it would uh, be associated with non-commutative deformation of the algebra functions on the phase space. So what would be explicit uh, uh, description of uh, that system. What is found is that it is described uh, naturally in terms of the quantum groups, uh, which appeared uh, in the studies of uh, integrable systems like spin chains and two-dimensional uh, field theories and uh, others in, uh, in 70s and 80s. And mathematical uh, axioms were given by Drinfeld and Jimbor. So quantum groups are not groups, but it's generally non-computed deformation of the algebra function on something like a group. And in that, uh, so it's like a deformation quantization. And in that uh, 
uh, deformation uh, and in the deformation of the multiplication you see the parameter epsilon or h bar that's the quantum uh, constant the Planck constant uh, for this uh, quantum integrable system it has nothing to do with the uh, Planck constant of the original four dimensional theory indeed we had quantum theory for the in, in four dimensions and it was shared with the classical integrable system so that must be some new parameter and it turns out that uh, this new parameter uh, epsilon is actually one of uh, those parameters that we are present in the omega deformation first uh, introduced just as a technical regularization tool to compute the low energy physics of those n equals to theories so if you if instead of sending both parameters epsilon to zero you keep one of them and send only the other one to zero it turns out that the solution in the low energy of the theories of those n equals to uh, theories uh, corresponds to the quantization of these uh, algebraic integrable systems so epsilon is a Planck is a Planck constant So what happens in our solution is the following. The, the function g of x, which was valued in the maximal torus of the uh, queer group, is replaced by an element of the maximal commutative subalgebra of the appropriate quantum group. And uh, this is the table for the cases that we have studied. So there are two columns here, the classical and its quantum counter counterpart and there are similar uh, several types uh, several classes of theories which I, I would call the theories for finite quivers on R4 and the theories for a fine quiver on R4 and then one can go uh, high to the trigonometric version and put uh, the theory the five-dimensional young mills on R4 times S S1 and again consider the finite quiver and the fine quiver so in the classical case for the theory on R4 here we had just uh, finite uh, torus valued uh, group element g of x which was parameterized by the uh, x uh, variable on the additive plane C and the non commutative deformation of uh, that um, so you can you can think about g of x as an element of the loop group or maximal torus of the loop group. And then non commutative deformation of it brings us to the Youngian that would be uh, the, then G of X is replaced by an element of the maximal commutative uh, subalgebra of Youngian, and there is explicit uh, formula for it, but I'm, I'm not given here because of uh, technicalities. Now, for the affine type of theories, then at each point X, G again g already was valued in the loop group because we used to parameterize the modular space of the g bundles on the elliptic curve and uh, this is the same as the space of conjugacy classes on uh, of, of, of the loop group of the loop group after deformation it uh, becomes the young yang associated now to affine kasmudi uh, uh, the algebra g so here it's like the two uh, here it's like two loops uh, added uh, besides non commutativity one uh, comes just from the loop which exists in the uh, in the description of the quiver and another is uh, the dependence on this uh, spectral parameter x uh, for the five dimensional versions uh, the youngians are naturally replaced by their uh, trigonometric uh, counterpart and uh, the, the non commutative deformation, the uh, relations in the axioms of their uh, quantum groups, uh, where you previously had shifts, now there is a multiplication. Uh, the multiplication comes with the parameter Q, which has nothing to do with the, uh, with the coupling constant or the elliptic modulus of the uh, curve that we had previously. So the gauge coupling constants I will denote by uh, bold Q and by the small q uh, will be denoted just exponent of the h bar. Uh, so you see, in the classical case, for the theories on R4 times S1, the g was an, 
was a group maximal torus valued element, which depended on the x variable that took values on a cylinder or on multiplicative complex plane. And after uh, quantization, it's replaced by an element of quantum affine algebra. And if you go one next uh, uh, further in the complication and consider the quivers of the affine type, then in the classical case, the G was uh, function, uh, function uh, the, the G took values in the maximal torus of the affine Casmodial algebra, and X was a variable on the, on the cylinder, and its quantum counterpart is a quantum toroidal algebra. So the characters uh, chi of G of X are then replaced by the, its proper quantum versions. For the 5D case, that's uh, Q characters known as the frankel rishi Q characters. And in the 4D case, they are Youngian characters uh, found by Knight in 94. And the spectral curve equation of uh, G classical integrable system is then replaced by the difference in the four-dimensional case or Q difference in the five-dimensional case equation. So this equation is formally exactly the same as Baxter equation for the spin chain of the type XXX in the 4D case or trigonometric spin chain of the type XXZ for the five-dimensional case. And the Lie algebra uh, symmetry of the spin chain is G. So I'd better put here a G quiver as the convention was that G is finite dimensional group. But uh, here normally the symmetry that we find on the sides of the spin chain is GQ, which might be uh, as well affine Kasmudi Lie group for the uh, quantum, uh, sorry, for the, for the affine uh, uh, quivers. So that uh, in the affine cases like here, or here you would find uh, toroidal Youngian or, toroid or quantum toroidal uh, affine algebra. Now, uh, the quantum version So the quantum version of the num transform between the G monopole instanton picture and the Hitchin picture uh, is uh, not known for arbitrary G, but for when, when G is of type uh, SL R plus one, it's known as bispectral duality, and I think Peter Korotev will give a talk tomorrow about it. But uh, since we want to uh, have description uh, here for a general G, we will stay in this uh, G monopole or instanton picture and uh, not uh, uh, consider the dual Hitchin type description. So, this was just uh, announced. And now, the, now, this work relates to uh, the, the following uh, uh, topics. Uh, there is AGT correspondence between the instanton partition functions in the omega background and the Deville conformal blocks. It's normally formulated in the dual uh, uh, picture of the uh, Hitchin type, which we are not considering uh, here. The, one of the questions that uh, would be interesting to find is what would be uh, the counterpart of that uh, AGT statement for arbitrary quiver of uh, G type if, we, if, you, if you don't have uh, S-class type description of the theory, but if you do have this uh, GQ or symmetry algebraic integral system, so what would be uh, the counterpart of the uh, W algebra conformal blocks if you, uh, if you don't have a Hitchin system but only this type? Then uh, there is a relation to cluster algebras, to Oppers W algebras, and uh, to geometric length lens, to so there is there is a possible that there is a relation to integrability of a spectrum of anomalous dimensions in equals four C prime mills, and for that one would uh, need to find uh, the analog of this construction that we had for arbitrarily simple laced group G, generalize it for a super group, so. The, the, the work of people on, on the spectrum of anomalous dimensions in uh, N equals 4 super young mills reduces this 
reduces to the Young-Yang symmetry of uh, SL4 slash 4, and the spin chain where the symmetry algebra on the sides of the spin chain is SL4 slash 4. So if uh, one can understand what would be the physical description of the queers that would have uh, supergroup symmetry rather than normal group symmetry, then probably we would uh, find some connection with the work of uh, integrability in the post four and else. And uh, thank you very much. Well, what we call integrable system here is the complex version of what is normally called completely integrable system in classical mechanics. And the, the, the usual definition is that you have a phase space and there, let's say, of real dimension 2R. And on that phase space, you have R Poisson commuting Hamiltonian functions. And those Hamiltonian functions, they're like action variables. So they, they, they define a projection to some uh, space of values of those action variables, and that's the base of the vibration. And then the fibers, they're uh, Liouville tori uh, in, the, in, in the real case. So here they are, they are just generalized to be the, the complex version of that. All right. So, it's, 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 so it's, the, it's the conventional definition, the holomorphic version or analytic version of the conventional definition mm -hmm. of integrable system. Didn't, didn't hear the first part. You mentioned um, like possible connections. For instance, is there a counterpart of H P J? Right. So do you have a guess of what the counterpart of the uh, W algebra would be? Well, for that we would need to turn on the second um, parameter of the omega background, and we be, we don't have answer yet. So the integrable systems that you talk about uh, in this case, are they in any way related to the to the ones that appear in three-dimensional mirror symmetries? Uh, that that Iolo, uh, in the paper that mirror yeah, like 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 XX, XXZ spin chains. Yeah, but spectral duality. Yes, but the, the uh, it's better to say that the five-dimensional. Well, you see the five-dimensional series that we consider here when you. Uh, Take them in the omega background with one epsilon. It's like reduction on a uh, one on a, on a t two around that epsilon deformation, and you get the three dimensional theory. The difference between uh, three dimensional theories and five dimensional theories are instant ones. So the my understanding that the integrable systems which appear just if you look at the formulas there in the three dimensional case, they are associated to the perturbative part of the functions which appear in the five-dimensional case. They, they, they do not count instantons, but they, but they just count uh, the functions like uh, uh, poly, polylog the, and, and Q versions of that. And, and, and that, con that is contained in the uh, perturbative uh, part of the five-dimensional series. So for the affine quivers, I mean, the perturbative part is the same. I think that the 3D is like perturbative part of the 5D. Okay. 